Hey, this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. In this week's guitar lesson, we're going to take a look at the rhythm style of Tony Joe White. Now, Tony Joe White may not be a name that you've heard of, uh, and he's a great singer-songwriter, uh, but he's also a really, really good guitar player. He's very underrated in the guitar scene, but I'm always fascinated when I watch videos of him play. I've never actually seen him play live, but he's just very smooth, very polished, and he makes it look very effortless. So if you're not familiar with him, check him out. You can do a search for Tony Joe White and you'll see some videos. He's probably most famous for Polk Salad Annie. You know, Elvis did that. And, um, and that, in fact, that's what this is based on. I wanted to do something in the style of kind of that Polk Salad Annie uh, groove. Uh, he also did Rainy Night in Georgia, but just an awesome musician all around. So this lesson is split into two parts. In this video, we're going to take a look at the first half. If you'd like to watch the second half, as well as download the tablature and the MP3 jam track, you can get that by going to ActiveMelody.com, go to the lessons page, and do a search for EP212. That's a lesson number for this lesson. So let's go ahead and get started with part one. All right, so let's talk about tone settings. I'll be very brief. I'm playing clean channel on the amp with the uh, reverb at about maybe three, about 30%. Uh, and I'm using one pedal. It's a boost pedal. It's called Pure Boost. And it's made by Moore, M-O-O-E-R, maybe Moore, I'm not sure how you say that. But I have the boost at about 50%. And so I take the guitar volume and I back it off to about 6 or 7. And that the reason I do that is because a lot of this has these muted strums like that. And if the, the volume is up too high with that boost, it starts to distort and sound just kind of... I don't know, too crackly or something. So just play around with the settings. You don't need any pedals. You can plug straight into your amp and play, or you could even do this on an acoustic guitar and it'll work just fine uh, that way. Okay, so the song is in the key of E, but the first thing I want you to do before you do anything with your left hand is to get a rhythm going with your right hand. And so we're not even gonna put our left hand on the fretboard. We're just gonna do this with the right hand. Muted strums, these are all downstrokes. But you notice no strings are ringing out as my hand comes down. And my hand is coming off the strings every time I do that. So really what's happening is this part of the hand is resting on the strings before the pick gets there. And once you're able to do that technique, then we're going to add to that. So that's the first step, is to be able to just hit those muted strums. One, two, three, four. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make an E chord with the left hand. And then we're going to play strings 6, 5, and 4 out of that E chord. It's, it's okay if you bump a couple other strings too, but that's what you're trying to hit. You're going to play 6, 5, and 4 on the 1, and then you're going to do muted strums on 2, 3, and 4. So it sounds like this. 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can see right on the 1, you're going to let that bottom part of that E chord ring out. Okay, so now we're going to add to that. We're just building up to something. So the next step will be... And it starts to feel like a groove now. We're, we're starting to add a little bit of a, like a fill lick or a little lead part in there. And what I'm doing for that, it's just the low six string, and then, uh, or the low E string, and then I play the third fret on the six string with my pinky. Now when I hit that, I, hit, I pull it a little bit sharp. Just, it's slight. It's it's not like dramatic, and it happens quickly. So that's down, down, and then I do an upstroke on the fourth string. Now you're keeping your E chord down here, so so it sounds like that. And then so that's the, really the only upstroke that you've played so far is on that fourth string, and then we're back to the downstrokes again. So the first time you're hitting the chord, and then we're just going to hit just the low six string on the ones going forward. So it's that time I hit uh, three and four. But you but you could see that since I'm making the E chord, it still worked. Even if you accidentally bump another string, um, it still works as long as you're holding down that chord. Okay, so that's the the very beginning of this. All right, so you've set up the foundation now for this. Now we're going to add in some, some different fill licks, and there's going to be four of them. The first one goes like this. So what I'm doing for that is I'm doing a, I'm playing the fifth string, the open fifth string, doing 
doing a hammer on to the second fret on the fifth string. That's a down stroke. Then I do an up stroke on the fourth string, the open fourth string or the open D string. Pinky back down on the third fret sixth string. Then another up stroke on the fourth string, open fourth string. So we have. And then we're back to that low E string. So let me put all this in context. Let me back up and play from the beginning. Okay, now you may want to loop it at that point. Before you move on, if you're struggling with any of that, if it's starting, and, and it can be, I'm making it look easy, and so does Tony Joe White when you play, but if you've never done this, even something as simple as that, even though it seems like it should be simple, it can actually be pretty challenging. Just to get the timing right and to try and be accurate when you're hitting those strings. So slow this down if you need to. Now the next thing we're going to do is this little rhythm part that goes... And I keep referring back to that, you'll hear that a lot. Now I got that this is called playing harmonized thirds. And uh, Tony Joe White does do that quite a bit, especially in the song Polk Salad Annie. So if you ever want to check out his live version of that, he doesn't do exactly what I'm doing, but he's, he's playing some of these, these harmonized thirds um, in a different order. But, uh, but what I'm doing is I've got my ring finger up here on the 9th fret 4th string, my index finger is on the 7th fret 3rd string. So we're playing those middle two strings. And then we're going to shift, so my index finger comes down one fret to the 6th fret 3rd string, my middle finger now goes down on the 7th fret 4th string. So we have... And now we're going to go back to the way that we played the first one. So our index finger goes down to the 4th fret 3rd string, ring finger goes down on the 6th fret 4th string. So you have... When you put that in context, that's what it sounds like. So it's down, down, down strokes, and you can hear, here I kind of hit a muted, uh, it's not really a muted strum, but I almost just slapped the strings there to give it a little bit of a percussive thing, right there. And then when I hit that downstroke, I played another down, I let that ring out and hit that low six string again, that low E string, so that we're resetting it again at that measure. So you go. So just practice it. Now we're right back to where we started. Once you hit that uh, low E string, you're, you've kind of reset the dial. Okay, so that's a lot of information. Let's back up now and go to the beginning and play everything up to that point. So here's what we have. Okay, now uh, I go right back to that same rhythm. All right, so now we're gonna play another fill leg. Remember I said there were four fill legs. So this next one goes like this. And what I'm doing there is I'm doing a hammer-on between the 2nd fret and the 4th fret on the 5th string. And then that's a downstroke. Then I do an upstroke on the 4th string, the open 4th string. Now that sounds wrong when you hear those two notes together, but when you play it quickly and all in context, it kind of works. So what I'm doing... I do the upstroke on the fourth string, and then I come down with my middle finger to the sixth fret, I'm sorry, to the third fret sixth string. And you, you, that's that G note we keep coming back to. And then I kind of bend it a little bit and then take my finger off and hit that low E string, the low sixth string. All right, so after you play fill like number two, we go right back. right back to those harmonized thirds. So the format for this goes like this. You have fill lick number one, harmonized third. Fill lick number two, harmonized third. And you just alternate 
back and forth between playing these fill licks and these harmonized thirds. The harmonized thirds are the same every time. It's always... Um, but then you can improvise and do fill lick, other fill licks if you want. I'm going to show you four of them. So I do, I've just showed you two. Now the third one goes like this. Really cool. That's kind of a John Fogarty sounding thing. Um, all you're really doing is playing an E7 chord and you're kind of building the chord. But let me show you what I was doing. I, I started by playing the E chord here, and then I took my index finger off and played the open third string, or the open G string. Do a hammer on to the first fret. With a, that's a down stroke. And then you do an up stroke on the one string, or the high E string. And then the pinky goes down on the third fret second string. And you let that note ring out so that you can come down and hit that low E string. So it goes. So practice that. Just like that. So that would be fill lick number three. And then after that, we go right back into the same harmonized thirds. Now that's a lot of information. Let me go ahead and start from the beginning. I'll play through slowly all the way up through the first three fill licks. So here we go. There's fill lick number one. There's your harmonized third. There's fill lick number two. There's that harmonized third again. There's that E7 chord, fill lick number three. Now we're back. Harmonized third. Now the fourth fill lick goes, and what I'm doing for that, it's a great little lick. I use this all the time when you're playing an E, uh, but I'm on the second fret, third string, sliding up to the fourth fret, and then I'm just going to play the open B string and the open one string. It's kind of like a banjo roll. That's what it kind of sounds like to my ear. Because those notes are the same there. So after you play that, you're going to slide it back from the 4th fret down to the 2nd fret. So you have... And then you're going to do a hammer-on on the 3rd string, open 3rd string to the 1st uh, fret. So you, all together. And then you're right back down to that low E string again. guessed it, right back to that part. And that's really where we're going to end this video. So in the second part we go into an, an, an A part uh, and then and I go through that twice and then there's sort of a, a conclusion. And all of this is pulled from chord progressions that I've heard uh, Tony Joe White play, so they're, I'm borrowing little uh, bits and pieces from uh, things that I've heard him do. But uh, check out some of his videos because you'll see what a smooth rhythm player, a great lead player too, but he's just very, he makes it look very effortless. And then when you try and do it, you think, wow, it's, it's harder than it looks, right? Uh, but this is a great type of rhythm to have down because, um, you, you know, especially if you're uh, singing and playing at the same time, to be able to sing over something like this, because you're just kind of slapping the strings. You're almost playing drums. And that would be a great place to, to, to sing a line. And then in between those lines, to throw in those little bluesy licks. Okay, I'm going to back up from the beginning and play through everything one more time, and that's going to conclude this first half. Remember, uh, if you want to watch the second half and download the tablature and get the jam track so that you can play all of this along with the, the band, uh, you uh, can go do that at activemelody.com. Go to the lessons page and do a search for EP212. Okay, here we go from the beginning one more time. <laughs> 